Good morning, guys. This is Ida. I just have a quick, um, hopefully a quick uh, tutorial on how I made uh, the Fumerian flowers. I've had a lot of requests on a video on that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that this morning. I'm going to try and make it short. And um, what I am going to do is I'm only going to cut it out once and paint it once. I'm not going to repeat that step because you can always go back, you know, rewind the video and watch that again. And uh, as many times as you like. So because um, I want to get through this video pretty quick. So we're going to start out, you know, by cutting the flowers. And what I, the flowers I'm talking about are these flowers right here. The foam ones that I make. And um, and I'm going to actually put the name, the title will be the name of what the foam is actually called. So I already have my petals painted and cut out and all that. And here's some extra ones that I already have cut out. But I'm not going to paint these be or or use these because I want to show you step by step how to do it. Now the first thing that you do need to do is you need to make these little aluminum foil cones. And uh, of course the smaller the flower the smaller you want your cone to be. And all I did was make it like into the like a Hershey kiss shape but uh, small ones. So that's all and this is only aluminum foil and the thinner the aluminum foil the easier it is to work with because when I first started doing them all I had was that heavy duty foil and it was really hard you know to shape the cones but if you get the just regular Reynolds wrap or a cheap brand of Reynolds wrap that would probably work better for you. So let's go ahead and cut um, a piece and usually I cut it in a long strip but because I'm only going to do one I'm going to use this little piece of foam and as you can see it's really really thin and uh, I'm just going to cut a little square because I am going to make a small flower so you know what this is what I'm going to do I'm going to cut it this way just and I mean literally it's yep it's an inch wide and then I'm going to fold it in half I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut it here and it gives me two squares. Now, what what I do to shape it, you can use a die because you can use the wafer thin dies and you can probably layer up about four or five of these sheets and it will cut. Uh, but I'm going to do it by hand. That way, whoever wants to do it, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a die for this. And some people even punch it out, but it kind of gets stuck in the punch unless you put a paper over it but I'm going to show you how I did it now all I'm going to do is I'm going to round this corner right here I just took that little tip off that was it I'm going to do the same thing over here I'm just going to round it there you go and in the third corner I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to take that little corner off that's all I'm doing I'm not doing nothing special I think this might need to be rounded a little bit more You know, kind of try and eliminate those uh, points. So here's the shape that you want, guys, just like a flower petal. And all I did was take round the three corners and I left one the way it was out of that little square. So that's how you're going to cut your petals. And, you know, if you need to see it again, just kind of rewind your video and um, and that way you can uh, do it. You can see it again. So that's all I'm going to do as far as the cutting. Now I'm going to show you how I paint these. And it's really easy. And all I do is, here's a little um, dew drop paint uh, that I use. And all I do is just kind of sponge it on. Just like this, I'm just dabbing it. Or you can take one of these tips and rub it. But, you know, all I do is dab. That's pretty much all I do. And I do that, and, and you're going to do this in the front and back of the petal. So there's... I'm just going to flip it over and do the same thing. And the only reason I'm doing this this way, because I still need to add other colors, is because since I already have this out, I may as well do both sides. So I'm done with that color. The other color I like to add, I love to add the, like a lime green to my projects. So this is going to go on the tip that we didn't cut. Because usually flowers, you know, at the tip, at the base, they do have that lime green, especially before they even open up. So all I did was dab it. That's all I did, guys. And it's not looking like nothing special right now. But by the time you heat it up and work with it, you're going to see that um, I'm going to take this little tip now because I don't have, I want to use a darker color for the tip of the petal. 
and because I don't have it in a little dew drop size I'm gonna go ahead and just use this one um, what was I saying I completely forgot and all I'm oh by the time you're done shaping the flower the the colors will blend together and I'll show you what one looks like already done and then when the process when we do this one you're gonna see that it does so this color the darker pink I'm just gonna dab it around the edge that's it guys that's all I'm doing so now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and it looks kind of you know it looks blotchy right now because all we did was dab you know ink on there but once we shape it you're going to see what I'm talking about now what I use to um I don't have a craft iron so I went to the thrift store and found this hair straightener and the whitest one that they had I didn't want those little skinny ones because I do, uh, at that, when I bought this, I was doing the foam dolls. So uh, I needed like a bigger platform. So I bought this one and I just kind of cleaned it up with alcohol. And this is the one I use. And um, I'm going to turn it on. And it usually sets to 380. And I lower the temperature to about 300. You know, which I, I you know, it's like a medium high. So let me move these scissors out of the way for now. And let me turn on my hot glue gun. So you are going to need a hot glue gun, you're going to need scissors, you're going to need inks and uh, uh, foil paper and the foam. So this is what the petals look like already painted. I mean already shaped and everything. See it's got a it's slightly cupped in the center. See how the colors just blend really nicely when you shape them. So I'm going to show you that, it, I mean even though, look at the difference. Compare the two colors guys. I mean, big difference, right? And I didn't do anything. I didn't blend it. I did nothing. But by the heat and and work it in, working it in my hands, it the colors just kind of blend with each other. <clears throat> so I've got this going already. It should be hot enough. And let me see if I can move this to the center because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah. And all I do, <clears throat> excuse me. Is I just put it in there and be careful not to burn yourself and as you can see it's kind of starts to cup because of the heat now that's good enough right there and all I do is I pretend like I'm going to rip it but I don't I just I pull my fingers in opposite directions as if I were ripping a package that's what I do see the wave that it gives it so after we do that all we're going to do is just kind of pleat it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. See, mine isn't even, per mine's not perfect. And you're going to twist this. You're going to twist the tip and that's, this is the, the, the tip that's the darkest. And you're just going to kind of roll it between your, your pointer finger and your thumb and just kind of roll it to give it shape and, and ripples and all that good stuff in there. So that's all I do. See what it looks like, guys? It doesn't look like anything. And then I open it up. I open it up. And I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to put my two thumbs together in the center. And I'm going to just kind of stretch over. Like turn my fingers, my thumbs into me. And it stretches and it cups it. See how it's cupped? That's, that's all I do. Now to, for these two side edges of the petals, you want to roll them back slightly. Now you can either heat it up again or you can just try and do it. And, and it's really easy to roll guys. Like as soon as you catch that edge, it starts to roll. See there? Or you can use a skewer or something. And I didn't have to heat it up again because it was already warm. And um, let me show you the process. I just kind of grab that edge and roll. That's all I do back and forth. And it gives me that nice little, um, see the back? And that's going to take a little practice, but you guys will get it. And I'm going to continue to stretch it and shape it until I get it cupped. Because you do want it to cup because it cups over that cone. But see how the colors blend it? Let me turn it around. See how the colors blend it nicely? And it's beautiful just like that. You don't have to do you don't have to do any blending because like I said, what while, while you're working it in your hands, the colors are gonna start to blend into each other. So that's one of the bigger ones that I did, and I'm just gonna set that aside because I already have mine all colored. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this this um 
hair straightener and move it out of my way. Uh, just give me a sec, guys, because I am going to unplug it and just move it completely out of my way. And put it, like, on my thermal sheet or somewhere where it's not going to um, burn anything. Okay, so there it is. And this right here on my glass, I can wipe it up with a wipey or anything. And it comes right off of my glass. I love this glass. Now I'm going to move all these inks out of the way because I am done with them. And I just have a mess up here where I'm, like I said, working on different things, trying to get my swaps done. And to do this, you don't need as many colors as I use. You can use whatever colors you want. But I do like to use a light pink, a darker pink, and then a, some type of green or lime color. So... Here are all my little bitty petals. Well, these are not my little ones. These are my medium sized ones. So I'm going to show you. There's the medium one. Here's the larger one. See the difference? And then here's the, the, the really small ones. There's not too much of a difference between this one and that one. Well, maybe this one would be a better idea. See how they graduate in size? So the bigger the petal, um, the bigger the rose. And we're, today we're going to work on the medium sized rose. And uh, I'm work. I'm doing these to include into my swap boxes. I at least want to include one of the roses in them. And if I happen to bump you with my glue gun, I'm sorry because my phone and everything's hanging right above me. And I can have it low so you guys can get a good idea of what I'm doing. Now because this is a medium one, I'm going to choose a medium sized cone. You can tell that this cone is bigger than this one. So just, you know... However big you want your flower, if you're making a huge one, then of course you're going to need a bigger cone. So we're going to start out with the first petal. And the only thing we're going to do, see this little indentation right here where it curves? That's where you're going to put your cone. And the first petal, the very first one that you put on, you wanted to cover your cone completely. So we're going to wrap it around. We're going to wrap one side around first. And then we're going to stretch this other side to cover and wrap kind of close it in completely like that where you cannot see the cone if you can see the cone you do want to glue it up higher where you can't see it so here's where we're going to start out you're just going to add a little dab of glue you can either add it to your petal or to the 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 Reynolds wrap cone and see all I'm doing is just kind of curving it around the, the cone and I'm sorry that my big fingers are in my way but you know I can't do anything about that one. So that's what it looks like half covered. See the point is down. So now I'm going to add some more glue on this side of the cone. And hopefully close it up now. So I'm just going to tug on this side and I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to start wrapping it around the cone. See how I'm closing it up guys? That's what you want. You want to close it up so you cannot see the foil cone that you have in there let me let it set for a quick second and then I'll show you see that's what you want right there like you just wrap that cone that's all you're doing a little tight little ring opening up here and this bottom part you can either trim it off or you can glue it down usually I glue it down I don't trim anything I don't trim anything off I just kind of squeeze it all in together Careful you don't burn yourself like I didn't burn myself there. It's, my glue gun gets hot, but maybe I've developed a tolerance for it. I don't know. You know, because us uh, Hispanics, we, or me, uh, I make tortillas. So I'll flip my tortilla on the grill without a spatula or a fork or, or anything, just with my fingers. You know, and we, I guess we develop a tolerance for the heat. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked there, guys time for breakfast so the next petal that we're going to do we're going to cover it we're going to place it right over where we, the wrapping ends we're going to place it right up right over that so we're going to put a little dab of glue right here we're going to grab the next petal and we're going to place it right over that and we're going to do the same thing we're going to wrap it around so i'm going to put now i don't have to worry about is my cone covered up we're just going to close it up there we're going to add some more glue on this side close it up over here and there's our second one 
Now here's the bottom. That's what the second one looks like, guys. And you can actually turn these little, uh, roll these out. And just by pushing on it, see how it rolls when I push on it? It does roll. And it gives it that shape like a, like a rose does, you know, like the petals are unraveling. So now we're going to glue the bottom in. And I really like gluing the bottom in instead of cutting it because it gives you a really nice uh, cone shape, you know, like a bulb at the bottom of the rose, the way the roses are. But look at how pretty. You could stop right here, guys, and this would be your bulb before it opens, your bud before it opens. So we're going to continue, though. We're going to add more to it. Now, when I add another one, I'm not going to put it directly where this opening is. I'm going to go maybe about halfway behind that first one like in the center, see halfway? And that's where I'm going to start, and I'm going to start to wrap. But at this point, we're going to start to open it up a little bit. But remember, your tips are always pointing down. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue here, because this is where I'm going to put the next one. And I'm just going to put it there. The height, you always want to keep the height about the same as the top of your rose. And see how it's halfway? I started in the halfway point, and this is going to overlap that next, this petal, this previous petal. So I'm just going to add glue here, and I'm going to start to glue it down. And I kind of like to pull on it, and as long as you don't pull too much, it won't rip, because this foam does have a little give. So there you go. I'm going to roll this down. See, by just doing this with my thumb, just rubbing down, it does roll down. And this one looks pretty good as is, so I'm not gonna mess with it. So our next petal is gonna start about right here. It it's your flower. Actually, let me glue down the bottom before I even get further up. See the little tip here? The more you petals you put on, the less you have down here to glue down. But always glue it down. I think I need to glue this down a little bit right here. And I'm, I hope I'm explaining this uh, because this uh, rose is so tiny. So I always remember the cup side is the side that I put over my flower. So see, the more I add to it, see, it's starting to open up. My rose is starting to open up. And I don't, you know, after my previous one, I'm not going to say half, maybe a third of it is where I put my next petal. And if you get it where you put it too, too, far back, too far back or too forward, it doesn't matter. You know, it's your flower. It's still going to look good. So here's my other one. Ah. Come on. Add a little bit of glue here so I can glue it down. And, and when I'm doing this, remember I said that I kind of tug on it. And let me glue this side down a little bit. Not too much because at this point, keep your glue closer to the bottom at this point. Because at this point is where you really want to start rolling your petals. Like your rose is starting to bloom. Yeah. See, as, as soon as I go roll down like this with my thumb, it kind of just does it. You know, it's not really something that's difficult to do. And the more you do it, of course, you'll get the hang of it. So let's add another one. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to say about right here. And I didn't glue the bottom because there's not really hardly any bottom right there that's sticking out. A little bit of glue there so I can tack this down. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start rolling it down because I want it to start opening up like it's blooming. I hope I'm in frame, you guys. See the petals, how they're, they're starting to open up? Let me glue this. I can see this one needs to be glued down, though. How pretty is that? I'm going to add another one. So you can add as many as you want to, but the first one I always add two. You know, the kind of one going in this direction and then one going overlapping that first one in the opposite. And then I just kind of start, you know, layering uh, 
layering my petals. So I think I'm going to do my next one here. See, you can tell where it's cupped. And this one is going to go here. And at this point, you can start spacing them out a little more than um, your previous ones because this is where your petals are really starting to open up. And, um, and they don't have to overlap each other as much. I think I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. And you can tell by looking at this petal, we have this one out here and this one out here. By looking at it, you can tell that we need to add petals on this side of the rose. So it's, you know, it's pretty much, it's, it's obvious. You'll be able to tell where you need your petals. So there's that one. Now I am going to add a couple more. And that's all I have uh, done. And I use about, I'm going to say from 9 to 10 petals per um, rose these small ones now if you wanted to open the open them up then of course you would need uh, quite a bit more but see as I'm putting this one here you start to see that it's starting to even out on all the sides and I'm again after I set this down I'm going to start rolling it so I can get it to start to open up uh, slid a little bit down and you want to, like I said, keep them about at the same height. Let me add glue right here. It wants to shift on me. Now you can tell by looking at this, we need one more petal right here on this side. I mean, see what I mean? You have these three outer petals, but you have one that's missing here. So that's where we're going to place our last one. And then I'm going to show you how to do the bottom. Now... The way the bottom is done is not really exactly the way the roses are because when I used to make uh, make them for my cakes, I actually had a cutter that did it. Um, it made the roses look like they were real. But this looks pretty good too. So this one I'm going to go right there. And maybe this one I will tuck in there. Yeah. See what I did with this one? Instead of leaving it on the outside like it was just glued on the outside like that. See how it's obvious you don't you want it to kind of be on the inside where because if you ever paid attention to a rose, um, they kind of overlap each other like they're layered. So there's the last one we're gonna add to this, and this kind of evens out our rose. And at this point, you can continue to to kind of work with it and shape it if you feel like it needs to be uh, a little bit more round in the edges. You can start opening up your petals, rolling it down. Some would even have this point right here that you would have a they have a point right here, and all I'm doing is pinching right there, and it kind of also naturally curves it. So let's do the same thing here. And I'm just kind of pinching a little V right here. So there it is. There's the finished little rose. And I am I think this is small enough that it will fit into my embellishment box. So let's make this part that goes to the roses because, let me show you. The one I have here is too big. And I'll, I'm going to show you in the bigger rose. That way you get an idea. What we're going to make is this piece right here. Now, that's not really the way the roses are, but it looks pretty good. I like the way it looks, so that's what we're going to do. And again, you know, when I paint it at first, you're not going to, it's not going to look like, you know, it's going to be blotchy until we work with it. Ah, and I disconnected my thing. It won't take long. Let me plug it back up really quick, guys. Let me plug it. It'll only take me a sec. I actually had to rig everything up here so make space for my um for my glue gun so I could work here. Okay, so I'm gonna heat this up and while this is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the little piece. Now, this is pretty big because this is I when I cut this, you know, I'm I'm this is like my first time. I saw a video and I kind of just went for it. And the lady that does the video, I'll see if I can link the video on there because I have it saved in one of my favorites. 
but uh, she doesn't talk you through it. She's just doing it and you're just seeing what she's doing. So I'm trying to talk you through it because I think that's more helpful. So I don't want the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this little piece in half and then I'm going to measure and that's going to show me how tall or how long these leaves or this foam is going to reach up my flower. See, these would be too long. So you don't want it to be long like that. Ah, this glue strings. You want it to be short. So I just folded this in half because you're going to have to fold it in half. And that's a little long, but we'll try it there. So, and then I'm going to double it. So we're going to go, I don't know, maybe like this. We're just going to cut a little piece and I'm going to straighten this out. It doesn't have to be straight. It's just me that wants it that way. But it gives you an idea. This measures about an inch and a quarter uh, by two. It's a rectangle by two and a quarter. Now what you're going to do is you're going to fold it like this in half. And then you're going to fold this in half. Now on the side that's folded over, this is the side where you want to make sure you don't cut all the way to the bottom because you want all these four little uh, pieces to be attached. So we're just going to kind of give it a leaf shape. Like I'm just kind of rounding it up to the tip. But see, I didn't cut all the way through right here because I want them to be attached. So now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of give it that come up to that point and just give it like a little leafy um, shape and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to twist. Now I'm just going to go in and put little slits into the, the leaf and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go down. I'm not going to cut this way guys up. I'm going to hold the tip, which is the top of the leaf towards me and I'm going to cut down there. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you. And there's very little waste in this. Now if you use a die, you are you are going to waste more. Because I'm going to show you. These I cut with a die. And uh, there's all this waste right here. But as you see where, where I'm cutting the other way, I'm throwing away just little bitty scraps. Because this stuff is expensive. So here it is. All the pieces are attached. Now we're going to paint this the same way we did the other. So I'm going to use this. This is the darkest green that I have. If I had something darker, I would use it like a moss color because rose leaves are very dark. But this is what I have. So this is what I'm going to use. And all I'm doing is just pouncing it on, on the foam. I'm not doing anything special. I'm not blending. I'm not nothing. I'm just pouncing it. And you want to get it pretty dark. Now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing. But when you look at a rose and it has new growth on it, the leaves have red in them. So we're going to, I don't have a red, but I have like a dark rust. And that's what I'm going to use because I don't have this in a red um, color. But a dark rust will work. So there it is. That's all I do to color it. Here's the other color, and this is just chalk paint, guys, by Prima. So here's the other one that I'm going to use. It's called Brick Wall, and that's pretty good. And the only place I'm going to do that is going to be around the edges where I put the cuts. Now, if it gets in the middle, it's not a big deal because it's going to blend. So that's what we're, I'm doing it, just like on the outer edges of the, the leaf. Because the roses do have red in them, the leaves. And that's what gives it this brownish, dark, reddish color on the edges. And it blends beautifully. So, let's do the... And like I said, we got to do the front. And we do the back. And I'm trying to stay on the outer corner where the slits are. But if it gets in the middle, well, it's not a big deal. So, that's it. And now we're going to heat this up. And this is the easiest part, guys. We don't have to do much to this. Let me wipe this off. I'm going to heat it up. Put it in my hair straightener. And you can see it starts to curve up. 
And I think that an iron might be better because then you don't run the risk of burning yourself on that top piece. So that's pretty hot right there. And I only do it for a little bit, guys. I don't even heat it up that much. So I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to fold it back over onto itself. And then again, like this, the way we started out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to twist. I'm twisting the whole thing. I'm going to twist. Or you can roll it in your hands like this. You can do whatever you want. Now when you open it up, see how it does? It's all twisted and everything. And I like to stretch mine a little bit because they get really thin in the center. But make sure not to tear the little pieces off. But you don't have to do what I'm doing, you know. This is just what I like to do. And this might be a little, no, it might be okay for this rose. And when we add it to the rose, look at how pretty that looks. See how pretty that is? So we're going to add a little dab of glue right down here. And we're going to center this. And I don't glue it all the way up. I just kind of a little bit. Like I'll put a little dab of glue maybe right there because I want it to stay up a little bit. I'll do the same thing over here. And really I think the rose has five of them, but I can't figure out how to cut it where five of them are attached. I'm going to have to work on that because I know there's a lot of people that, you know, do those paper dolls and one's attached to the other. And those are side by side. This doesn't work out that way because it's not like one long string of them and then this one I'm gonna just adhere it there there's our rose there is our rose what do y'all think how pretty is that there's the bottom and if you wanted this shorter of course when we were when I was trimming it into a leaf shape I could have actually trimmed it lower to make it uh, shorter but I kind of like the way these things just kind of do this wild thing on there. I like the way they look. So there is our finished flower. So I hope that this helped you and I hope that I explained everything well for you. If you have any questions, just let me know and I will definitely try and answer you. I want to thank everyone for watching, you know, and and just that, you know, I don't do this for subscribers to get a large amount of subscribers or or none of that stuff, you know, because I don't get paid to do it. I do this because I enjoy it, you know, and uh, when I see something that I like, I want other to, other people to to see it. You know, I want to share it with somebody. So I just want to thank you guys for watching and I hope everyone's having a great day or the beginning of a great day. You know, if we wake up in the morning, we're already blessed.